Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a demonetized channel to see the world from a different perspective independent of the mainstream Western narrative. Ten days ago, we uploaded a video about whether China and the US can improve their relations, and our answer at that time was no. Today we confirm the negative answer once again. The same day we published that video, the US passed its National Defense Authorization Act of 2023, a bill signed by President Joe Biden that totals around $860 billion. It is worth mentioning that the total expenditure is in real billions, not millions, as Joe Biden promised the African nations. The US plans to assist the African continent, which has over 50 countries and nearly 1.3 billion people, with 350 million US dollars. Still, it decided to spend 860 billion US dollars, almost 2,500 times more than its promise to 1.3 billion Africans, on the military of the United States, one country with 330 million people only. On December 24, 2022, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson answered a reporter's question on the U.S. signing of the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2023, saying that China is strongly dissatisfied with the U.S. side's insistence on passing and signing the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2023, which contains harmful content involving China. The bill recklessly exaggerates the China threat and arbitrarily interferes with China's internal affairs. It blatantly attacks and smears the Communist Party of China, a severe political provocation to the Chinese side. The bill also contains a large number of damaging provisions related to Taiwan, which seriously violate the One China principle and the provisions of the three joint communiques between Beijing and Washington, send a seriously wrong signal to the Taiwan independence secessionist forces and cause severe damage to peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Viewers may ask why the US keeps provoking China with the Taiwan card, even if Taiwan is not America's core interest. Washington knows its military presence in that area cannot stop the Chinese army from reuniting Taiwan with China mainland forcibly. However, it hopes China initiates a civil war across the Taiwan Strait so Chinese people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait fight each other to slow down the rise of the greater China area. Taiwan is a focal point. It is a crucial part of the first island chain. If China mainland takes over Taiwan and becomes a united country, the Chinese army's aircraft carriers can patrol the West Pacific like shuttle buses. In the coming 10 years, China may have five carriers, dominating the West Pacific from the Far East to the South China Sea. With the Liaoning ship arriving in Guam, the second island chain can no longer restrain China. The Chinese aircraft carrier has demonstrated a strong combat capability by landing and taking off 260 sorties of carrier aircraft in 10 days. The Chinese Navy's first aircraft carrier, Liaoning, has been in service for more than 10 years. Its first trip to the waters near Guam tells the US that China can also approach America's doorstep if necessary. It is the Chinese aircraft carrier's turn to patrol waters near the United States. In the past several years, Chinese ships also appeared in Alaska, another US territory. In the middle of March 2020, China's top diplomats, Yang Jiechi and Wang Yi roared in Alaska like tigers and lions, clearly showing their confidence that China could at least defend itself in the West Pacific. Suppose China does not possess atomic bombs, aircraft carriers, hypersonic intercontinental missiles, the Beta satellite navigation system, and the capability of paralyzing or shooting down any adversary's satellites. In that case, no Chinese diplomats can speak up for their national interests so confidently. They could roar and lecture Antony Blinken in Alaska, the United States, because the country behind them, China, is a lion, not a cat. What does the Liaoning ship's trip to Guam reveal? First of all, the first island chain has become a historical term. As an essential tactic for the US to contain China, the first island chain played a key role, but with the increasing strength of China's navy and air force, it could no longer trap China. Guam is a critical node in the second island chain, and it is even a U.S. headquarter in the Pacific Ocean to contain China. However, the fact that Chinese ships appear near Guam and conduct training shows that the second island chain has become null and void. Guam is literally within the shooting range of many Chinese ballistic missiles and is accessible to Chinese aircraft carriers. It is a real threat from China, 
and the U.S. military cannot stop the Chinese ships from advancing to the ocean. Based on international and American national laws, the U.S. Army cannot even stop China from protecting navigation freedom near the U.S. coastlines if the Chinese ships keep a safe distance of 12 nautical miles away. The U.S. has constantly sent its rusty ships to the South China Sea to flex its muscle for many years. The Chinese guys should also follow suit and send their newly built and well-painted vessels to Hawaii, Florida and California to protect their business routes from the threat of pirates. The relations between China and the U.S. will remain the same in the coming 10 years. And in the first half of the 21st century, Beijing and Washington will be the two primary players in the world arena. The contest between the two nations will be more volatile than the Cold War between the U.S. and the former Soviet Union. It is not easy for the U.S. to defeat China. The USSR led a group of poor socialist countries, mainly in East Europe, the Warsaw Pact nations, and the group's economy was too weak to counteract the assault from the West led by the United States. The former Soviet Union committed suicide, and it was not defeated militarily by the Western bloc. China has learned much from the USSR and knows economic prosperity and military modernization are equally important. Beijing does not have many allies like the US, but it has many friends worldwide. For instance, China is more welcome in Africa, the Middle East and Latin America than its competitor. Even in the South China Sea, China carefully treats its neighbors with conflicting interests. Suppose the Philippines and Vietnam are in the Caribbean Sea, and have disputes with the United States. In that case, no one can guarantee they will not become second Grenada. The visit of Philippine President Masco Jr. to China in the first week of 2023 is an exciting event, showing that the new Philippine president is 100 times smarter than his Ukrainian counterpart. Chinese President Xi Jinping met with his Philippine counterpart, who is eager to develop a friendly relationship between the two countries. It also shows that America's return to the so-called Indo-Pacific area is unsuccessful. In 2016, China and the Philippines had an unpleasant time over the South China Sea issue, and at the last moment, the U.S. dumped Manila and avoided a direct military conflict with the Chinese Navy. The Philippines was betrayed and it knew it. Since then, the country has realized that Asia is not America's Asia, and it can never rely on Americans to provoke China. In just a few years, this country's attitude has changed dramatically. Even if the Philippine president changed from Duterte to today's Masco Jr., this country still decides to maintain a friendly relationship with China. The reason is simple, China can give the Philippines enough benefits. Today, the cooperation between China and the Philippines is more than just bilateral. China and the Southeast Asian countries are each other's largest trading partners, and RCEP will deepen their cooperation. As a result, the Philippines is gaining more and more benefits from cooperating with China. Moreover, Beijing shares its interests in the South China Sea with neighboring countries, even though it does not give up its claim to the South China Sea Islands. Therefore, the Philippines is unwilling to follow the United States in the South China Sea to provoke China. The U.S. is a declining power and has only fought for others with economic interests and political gains, which is still rare in its 250 years of history. Its role in the Ukraine war has told the world that it is the last to trust when crises come. It needs to solve its domestic issues quickly. The House remains paralyzed as no new House Speaker has recently been elected after eight rounds of voting. Republicans won the House, but no one can rule out the possibility of having another Democratic speaker. America's democracy has become the most beautiful sight to behold in 2023. China is the opposite. It can make decisions and take actions overnight, just like it suddenly switched from the zero-COVID policy to a natural immunity practice. It is sometimes better to be faster and quicker but only sometimes. China had too many bad experiences in this regard. Chairman Mao wanted to develop China into a modern country as fast as possible, so he launched many campaigns, social, political and economic, and caused a lot of catastrophes. We do not judge which system is better, the so-called American democracy, or the alleged Chinese autocracy. However, the countries will quarrel in the coming decades, and the United States will try to prove the superiority of its free economy, 
which is more like a joke nowadays when the US government imposes numerous restrictions to curb China's development. Even though the World Trade Organization ruled that America's trade barriers imposed on China in the trade war are against WTO regulations and should be removed, the two countries can't resume regular trade ties as before. The US and some of its allies will continue to decouple with China and build a new supply chain. Recently, more Vietnamese and Mexican products have been on the American market, which indicates China will not be the only world factory as before. The United States regards China as its competitor or enemy on most fronts. Since Obama took office, the US has been trying to stop China's rise by playing cards in Xinjiang, Tibet, Taiwan, Hong Kong and Inner Mongolia. As we said two years ago, the two nations would only be at peace for less than a year, and 2022 would be a challenging year, and it proved we had been too optimistic, as there had been no peace between Beijing and Washington at all in the past two years. The tension will continue. If Kevin McCarthy finally becomes the new House Speaker, his pre-announced trip to Taiwan will bring more uncertainties to the two countries. Of course, he needs to work harder to secure that seat before he can damage the relations between China and the United States. Let us wait and see.